Uh, I am backing Boris because Boris is the only candidate who received a mandate at the general election. And it wasn't just any mandate, it was a landslide. It was a landslide that was achieved uh, with polls prior to that uh, election that were in a similar position to where they are now. And look at where we are now without Boris. It, this, is a, this is a point of democracy, though. I believe the people of this country deserved what they voted for, and they wanted Boris Johnson. And they were very unhappy when MPs ultimately gave in to the Twitter sphere and to the intelligentsia and who ultimately wanted to get rid of Boris because they knew they had a better chance of getting back into the EU or, or, or fitting their own agendas uh, because any other MP wants to become the next prime minister of this country. I'm backing Boris. He's the right man. He's got the elected mandate and he's the only candidate that has got that mandate. So, Marco, um, the, obviously the Secretary of State for Defence has been uh, talking this afternoon and saying that he's not putting himself forward, even though he's very popular, and you and I both know that, uh, with uh, Conservative members across the country. I think because he takes his job seriously and gets on with the job that he has and wants to continue to do that. But he was very uh, clear that he was leaning towards uh, Boris Johnson in terms of supporting Boris. But, and he said it was a big but, what about this parliamentary inquiry? Because I think there's a lot of people concerned about that, Marco, that that could derail the prime minister again. And certainly what we need is stability. I, I quite agree uh, in, 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 in that analysis. But what I will say to you is, what are we going to do? Treat Boris the way we've treated him before and find him guilty until, uh, 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 until the facts have been assessed? We live in this country as a democracy where we are innocent until proven guilty. And what you are talking about there is that it needs to be proven that Boris willfully, intentionally misled Parliament. And I, for one, do not believe that at all. I've eyeballed Boris several times in the past, and I'm absolutely convinced that whatever he stated in Parliament was done so on the basis of what he genuinely believed to be the truth. Now then... Did parties occur in number 10? Yes, they did. But they didn't any of them involve Boris. These parties were from civil servants. And what most people don't know is that there were literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of offices there. They should be managers and they should be the chief of staff that control their own staff. It's not the job, as has been portrayed, for the prime minister to be out there policing every nook and cranny of, you know, probably well over a thousand offices to check that everybody's keeping to rules. Now, talking about the fixed penalty fine that he uh, was subjected to, no other MP who committed far worse was ever treated in the same way. So yes, Boris was treated differently. So all, all, all I would ask is, let's be consistent with how the law is applied and treat everybody the same. I think you'll find that many, many, many MPs and probably lots of members of the public, even unwittingly, broke these rules. And by the way, the rule he was alleged to have broken was a rule that uh, someone came in with a piece of cake. Someone came in who probably had previously had been standing next to him saying, please sign this report. It was his birthday. He took it. He reported it the very next day to the police. The police took no action, said nothing to see here. But then surprise, surprise, 18 months later, they decided to take a different view.